fashion is one of the world's most polluting industries. The committee heard evidence from environmental groups who say clothing production accounts for around 3% of global CO2 emissions. Annually, the industry reportedly consumes 31 billion litres of oil and 79 billion cubic metres of water. And despite efforts to clean up, the MPs heard claims that production methods cause 20% of all freshwater pollution. Despite environmental concerns, we still consume heavily. The UK purchased 1.13 million tonnes of clothing, but campaigners say that 2017 saw 12.5 billion pounds worth of clothing thrown away and 300,000 tonnes of textiles ending up in landfill. Well, we did ask to speak to the companies criticised by the Environmental Audit Committee, but TK Maxx, Kurt Geiger, Boohoo and Misguided all turned down our invitation to come to the Newsnight studio. But we are joined by The Guardian's Lucy Siegel and from Elle magazine, Natasha Perlman. So, um, Natasha, if I can start with you, um, do you think they're right to target so-called fast fashion in this way? I think that it's <sighs> fast fashion no, I don't think it's right. I think it's it's beyond fast fashion. I think it is uh, an affliction in a way that goes across the whole fashion industry. It's not just the fast fashion industry that is the, the high street that is responsible for the output of CO2. It is across all of the brands and all of the um, and all of the luxury and high street as well. Uh, tell us in a simple way definitionally what we mean by fast fashion and do you agree with Natasha I, on well, that Well, I, I don't agree. I actually think it's quite brave of them to label this as fast fashion, label this report and this investigation because fast fashion is a system of production and it's the one that's causing the problems. So the system of production basically allows rapid manufacture of fast fashion of fashion products, um, just in time manufacturing we call it, so an order is placed, it's pushed through the system. Uh, another characteristic is that the uh, fast fashion system offshores production to some of the lowest wage economies on earth, so we know that Bangladesh is a big centre for production for example, and they are producing fashion in increasingly sped up cycle. It's relatively new, so say two decades, maybe three decades, and it's sped up the entire time, so there's specific characteristics that we're looking at, and it's resulted resulted in pressure in the system and a product that has almost become disposable. And guess what? When we are given disposable looking products, we treat them as if we are disposable and we've ended up with a gigantic waste problem. And I think it's that which has really attracted the legislators and why there is a House of Common Commons uh, Select Committee looking at this at all. Uh, would you essentially argue that um, if you spend £100 on a coat, you're more likely to, to keep it and... and look after it than if you've spent 25 I mean is it, is it essentially uh, to do with pricing I don't and think the, it's the, the degree to which we invest in these things I don't think it's as simple as that because I think that a hundred pounds for a coat for someone who is earning a middle wage will seem like a lot it's 25 pounds to someone who's earning a very low wage will seem a huge amount mm -hmm. so I don't think it's about price I think that when you look at the fact that there are 14 million people in this country who are on the poverty line you know for them a £2 t-shirt might be really expensive and I think we have to be very, very careful with this idea that £25 means throwaway because it doesn't for everybody and I think we need to be clear about what it is that we're doing and when we shop, who the people are who are spending. So taking the point I about people, yes. people on the back, so is this a sort of another middle class argument like food, essentially we saying, oh, you've got to pay more for it, but you know, what if you haven't got the money? Well, I think that we have to look at this. First of all, we've got to look at the reality of the situation. This is an insufferable system, and it's insufferable because by 2050, fashion is going to be responsible for a quarter of all carbon emissions of any sector, it's huge, and we have to have big change now. We also have a huge waste problem. There are hidden costs to the system at the moment. For example, we are binning nearly a million tonnes of fashion a year. We're all paying for that through our taxes, and it diverts a lot of resources. I agree, though, that you can't really tell whether a coat is £100 or £25. It's very, very murky. You don't know. It's so supercharged, this system, and it's so predicated on us on our need to buy more and more and more, that it's very you hard to, to say. But it's not, well, what I was saying what, earlier is that it's not just coming from the high street. So there was yeah. a huge shift in the luxury fashion world, which, as mm -hmm. you kind of pointed out to me earlier, is this idea that 
it's embracing the fast fashion model. So the fast fashion model can span both sides of it. But there are luxury brands who've responded to this consumer need. We see what we want on our mobiles and we want it right now. So they have to, rather than have the fashion shows and then they set yeah, the trends and have high the high end. street beat them there, they will actually want to create fast. But, so Sorry, improved that because mm. time is a little yeah. limited. <laughs> you believe that this can be curbed legally, is that right? That, that you can that actually... I think we need. I think the good thing no. about this 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 whole thing and the environment committee looking at this is that we are seeing it through different lenses. I think we need legal remedies. I think that these that we're not going to stop this. In France, for example, they've brought in a producer responsibility legislation. So you can't just bung all your fashion out on the high street. You have to declare how much volume you're producing, and you have to take responsibility for collecting it and paying for it to recycle it or whatever. We need to Lastly, start doing uh, that. Natasha, sorry. Do you, do you think that could work? In the, is it a viable? Model I think for, as long as, as well. for me, I think that's it's really important. I agree that that would be a really great goal. I think for me, I know it sounds it may sound a pipe dream, but I do believe that fashion should be affordable to all, and I don't and I think it should be democratised. So I do think the challenge is how do you do this and ensure that the companies still deliver for people who don't have the income to spend huge amounts of money. How do you do this for people who only want to spend five pounds? And can you do it? And but I it think that should be. It's a volume issue. We've got to tackle the volume. Okay. Thank you so much.